Hey y'all, welcome to this channel. I thought we would do something a little bit different today since like I'm called Artsy Aries. I thought we would actually paint something for a change, I know, right? Well anyway, you'll have to check me out on Instagram. I paint other things too, like I'm Artsy Aries 23. But I'm going to pause this and get my colors out. So I was going to teach you how to paint something basically. So what we're going to do, this is a acrylic bristol board you can get these for you know whatever price anywhere like my advice to you is if you really like painting is to get online and buy them in bulk but I paint things like this this is like my little mouse pad I did and um, so kinda what we're gonna do to start is we're gonna get our background and then we're going to take a chill pill and I'm going to come back after my things have dried. So what I kind of like to do with my art is like I'll paint in steps. So it actually kind of works better as long as I, you know, keep my workspace fairly clean, which is a whole other challenge in itself sometimes. But, but I will show you how to easily paint and draw a scene. So I'm thinking what we're going to do, because I like to do trees, I'll show you how to paint a tree, and I'm going to teach you how to paint like water over like the sunset or whatever, something like that. Um, I don't really actually start with a whole plan, plan in place a lot of time, just sort of like a visual idea. But what you're probably going to need if you want to follow along with me is you're going to need your box of acrylic paints and um, I don't have them on me right now but you will need like if you want like glitter might not be a terrible idea or something or like little stars or something confetti whatever um, I had some little stars somewhere but you can incorporate stuff like this into this painting like basically kind of like the idea is, is you're going to paint something that's pretty, you know, that you can use as like what I have here is a mouse pad and paint yourself something nice for your office or whatever, or a gift for a friend. It doesn't really matter. Or if it's like a terrible painting, then you can use it to serve somebody food on or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> but the point is, it's your art, so, you know, you can make of it what you will. Alrighty, so let's, let me get some things up and started here. You know the funny thing is, like I had like a really nice, this is like just like a little kid's palette. Like I had several palettes. My sister, who isn't exactly the brightest crayon in the box, I told her multiple times one time, like, you know, you can't leave acrylic paint out to dry and like my paint things like that because it'll dry like rubber cement it took her like three to four times to not do that until finally like the last time she ruined I had a really nice metal like gold one that I also used for my um oils too that I was going to try to use and she ruined that too like I actually had to go make her buy me a new paint palette and paint brush so she would stop ruining I swear though, like if you if you do like painting though, and if somebody like that tries to borrow your stuff, I recommend setting firmer boundaries than I said, definitely. So what I would like to work with is just sort of these colors right up here. This is a nice new set of paints. Um I forget what kind of these are. But um usually you can get all kind of stuff in various places like online. Um but I'm going to go ahead and get out my colors and I'm going to show you how to do the background. Give me like two seconds. We're going to pause and I'll see you all back in a sec. Okay, so we have our colors out. So I'm going to start with like the typical sunset colors because I want this to be a night painting. I swear to God, I have told people to stop texting me and they won't. Anyway, it's like nobody listens to me sometimes, I promise y'all. But the other reason like I'm doing this is because also I'm going to be doing like a little class on this. So uh, so what we're going to try to do is like, <sighs> these paints are very new, is what you can do. I'll show you a little trick here because we're going to get like a good flat brush. If I can get this open, I need to get like a little 
You see, it's sealed. I'll be right back, y'all. I apologize. Okay, I think I got my my little sidekick person to chill on texting me. It's uh, anyway. But all right, so what we're going to do is like we're going to put our light colors in the center of our painting because we're going to this is where like my focal center of light is going to be, right? And you can actually put these paints right on your acrylic canvas. I have to put a little bit of purple paint up there, but like you want to put your darker colors sort of like around the edges of these pink colors here like this. And um what we're going to do is like I'll show you what I'm going for here in a jiffy. Hold on just a second. Um, and then we're going to take this blue up here and we're going to put it in the corners. Because we're going to do like the night sky, right? Now, what we can do is we're going to probably keep our little paper towel handy and um, so I have a whole set of brushes but actually the paint brush that would work best for this is your typical household painting brush because it's got like the wide flat um, another thing that you can probably use quite effortlessly for this would be a fan brush if you have one so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scoot this little monster forward and we're just going to take our wet brush and we're going to take our paints like this and we're going to take you see what I'm see how that looks and then we're going to do our background like that and here we go with texting me again you'll ever find that like you're not bothered until you're really trying to actually do something or concentrate. You ever have that experience? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sure. I'm going to get our brush wet again. Not spill water like I've just done. But you kind of want to get this dry because it doesn't really matter if you get all the paints out because it's going to blend. So. So we've got like our background like that and then we're going to leave this to dry also most likely I will kind of be putting like other coats of paint over this but this is kind of like your background of what you're going to do because like what we're going to paint is we're going to put some images here and then like our water line is going to be across the middle of this painting so i'll see y'all back here in a few minutes i'm going to take a little break let my stuff dry and finish cleaning up around the house here and we're going to finish this painting all right all righty so this is most of the way dry so what i'm going to try to do now is take my lovely fan brush here and blend some of this here um so what you can do is the nice thing is about acrylic paint it's actually fairly forgiving so if you mess something up um like if you do it at a certain phase in your painting it's kind of like working with watercolors which is nice so i just kind of want to get my tips of my brush wet you never want to get your brush all the way filled up with paint um, but the nice thing about these fan brushes is they add a nice water effect and like I am the sheddingest person I have ever seen in my life I swear to y'all it's like I live with that grudge ghost movie only like I am the ghost do you see how like what this this can make like a water effect though right you just kind of want to take your brush and do this back and forth to make your water effects and then it's also like how you can make waves you see what I'm doing here like I'm twisting it yeah um kind of like my thing is like I'd like to show you all like some painting brush techniques in this um, so because um, like even like if you can't draw at all whatsoever like if you get like these fun little brushes and you know how to use your techniques then you know that'll really help you totally all right so I kind of want to, this is, I've decided this is going to be the sky side. So I'm going to kind of just sort of come down 
with the colors here because I'm going to sort of That's a good place to stop. And then what I want to do is let's see. Um, let's get like to just to sort of fade it down into the pink, right? Like this. And then we're going to switch like that. And this is basically, I'm just sort of blending using like the water here. Um, sort of like the idea in this is just so like a beginner can paint this. Like I paint other things too, but this is sort of the easiest thing I could think of possible to paint would be just like something like a scenery picture. So I want to get like my, again, like I want to sort of like my, make my light focal point like right along the horizon. Um, but, like, if you wanted to, honestly, if, you, if it's your painting, you could put the moon up there, you could put a UFO, and do whatever you want. Do what makes you happy, right? Like, you know, if you want to paint, like, a flying hamburger monster, I'm down. Let's see it. <laughs> There's, like, a... I was reading something ridiculous about how there was some sort of spirituality based on like a spaghetti flying monster or something. And I was like, that's, I don't know, man. I don't know about that one. <laughs> say that. All right. So next, what I'm going to try to do is just take some water, take like a flat brush like this, like make sure like though, as you do this in steps, you clean your water. Like, um, my water's up over here. It's like a way to recycle, right? <laughs> anyway. That's the fun thing about art, too, is like you can upcycle so many things. It's pretty good. So, now, basically, this, you're just gonna gently like blend your colors. You know, it doesn't have to be like this big thing. I mean, imagine you could probably do this with like a pouring technique paint too, but like this is, it's a little more old fashioned. I mean, but do you see, all right, now, like, even though this does not look blended, this is actually kind of what you want because you're going to um, take this bottom half of this picture here and paint the wave layers. So right now, you're just going to try to blend your sky, right? But even like if you can't blend your skyline very well, like if it's not what you want, I'll show you all how to do some clouds or something. Let's do some clouds in this. We'll put some funky clouds. We'll make this look like a trippy dream, right? Um, I like to paint like a lot of stuff that like I see in dreams. So, um, next, like I'm going to get, like, I'm going to wait for this to dry just a little bit here and we're going to get like a dark green. Actually, yeah. I'm going to get like this color of green and I'm going to sort of put like, um, Now, the challenge is getting these little, I mean, this was a smart idea, but, because, like, a lot of the time when you buy these paints, like, if you don't buy high-quality paints, like, I swear you get what you pay for sometimes, but, um, I've bought in paints before that I've gotten that were, like, dry. I mean, they were, like, 75 cents a tube, but, <laughs> but yeah, don't... And that's the other thing, too. It's like you, you know, like if you want your stuff to look really professional, like I recommend, like if you can, trying to maybe like sell like a couple of pieces to like your family or a neighbor or whatever until you can save up the money to get like better paints. Like, 
the funny thing is I can't tell you how many like it just astounds me because like I painted like professionally like in my younger days like I actually sort of stopped and I did some medical stuff um, but like people would buy me like these kitty fine <laughs> paints all the time and be all like oh well why don't you really do something with that artwork and it's like well it's not it didn't because it's meant for like a novice it's meant for a beginner it's not a professional quality product I can't really you know sell it to somebody per se you know what I mean like there's like this book about like this little boy that was like an artist that I read in school. Um, if y'all can think of this book, please tell me what it is because I can't remember. It had some cute artwork in it. It had like this little boy that had sisters that did art and he had like brown hair and brown eyes or something. But like the his uh, thing was like he painted like pictures in school and the paint blew right off the painting. And yeah, th these were those kind of quality arts for sure. Like... I remember doing like um, a uh, picture one time and yeah the paint did not stay on the paper it was <laughs> really something <laughs> I was like ay 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 well so much for trying to really do something with that you know I think I'm gonna put like a tree at the top of this painting we're gonna do some foresty things and that's always another thing to always make sure your surfaces are well covered people seriously been there done that yeah so we're gonna give this a few minutes to dry but I'm gonna turn on my little light here so you can see just a little bit better um, hold on. <laughs> All right, so this is kind of upside down for you guys, um, but I'm going to do something about them white pieces later. But here's what we're kind of looking for, because I don't know if you can already start to see what we're going for here. But um, we're going to wait for this to dry just a little bit. Like, I kind of like to wait for my stuff to dry just so my colors don't run. Um, so... Like, if you're following me along, we're taking a smoke break, and I'll see you back soon. Or take a snack break, whatever you want, right? Um, but yeah, this is just mainly to kind of relax. And so, if you like this, I will definitely do more of these, for sure. Alright, I'll see y'all back in just a few minutes. Alrighty, so, it's been a few minutes, and anyway. I've decided I'm going to try to use a little bit different color of paint because I notice, or different brand of paint, I was going to say, because I notice this is a little bit thinner stuff, and it goes kind of back to what I was talking about earlier. So, I'm um, just going to put that down there in the corner and just blend it, and it'll be a nice little shadow effect for us. Um, This is kind of just the idea in my creating this. It's just sort of something supposed to be for, for beginners, basically. Um, you don't really have to... Because basically we're just making like the suggestion of a shape, right? We're not trying to actually draw anything. We're just making the suggestion of a shape. So what I'm trying to make like the suggestion of a shape of is like a tree with some land and I'm gonna put us a little boat over here and we're gonna you know we're just gonna gently do this and um, I'm gonna go over and blend everything once again um, simply just sort of because like these paints were a little bit thinner than I expected. Um, so, let's see, what else, what was I going to do? What's our next step? Well, 
Hmm. I'm going to probably have to be waiting on this to dry like a little bit more. That's the groovy thing about this is it doesn't have to be like something that you have to sit over and be focused on trying to trip on doing necessarily because this is something that you can sort of do in cycles just a little bit. I'm going to gently kind of come across like my land here I'm going to add my darker water and I'm going to put like my night sky and pull it down like this kind of make sure I'm not you know, corrupting my colors too much and this will actually look very different once it's dry too um, the other thing is like about painting this way too is I don't understand it but there's like this white spot down here that just wants to be rather persistent I'll have to do something about it I don't know like if you ever get something like that just I'll show you the final steps of this and it'll tie all together because basically what we're just going to do actually is we're going to put our colors down and we're going to blend everything all nice and then we're going to simply take like our pens and just highlight you know what we need to so yeah all right. okay so I've got a little bit more done here now I don't know if y'all can see this but uh, let me get this a little bit more forward. Um, it's going to stick to the paper. No. All right. But do you see what, how the layers are coming together, though, right? Like how, because, like, um, it actually matters, like, how you lay your brush and stuff right now. Like, as you saw me doing, like, I was just kind of tap, tap, tapping around the edge with my fan brush like definitely you all want to get like yourself a good set of brushes with different types um, you have your flat tip brushes your round tip brushes here um, I have a whole tray of them another thing you can do that we can get into later is like you can work with sponges you can work with different textures for different effects but um this is like the most simple. I added a little bit of glitter here so I could make some stars or some fireflies. Um, this also wouldn't be a bad activity to do sort of like with your older children too. Um, because like it's basically, we're working from dark to light with this too and um, Kind of the reason why like we're doing this like in steps is you know to sort of control like our mess now if you look at the back of my fingers and my hands I already have paint on me um but uh let's see what else so um as my paint like completely dries i'm gonna take some lighter colors and come back this way over the paints um, because it'll make like a certain water effect that I'll show y'all. Um, I'll show y'all a few different things about how to paint like reflection on water. But we're going to sort of like continue like with what we started on here. So like kind of I'm deciding now is to where like I want to put like my water line because we're getting into the home stretch of like when we can sort of add like our final details. Um, so like your next step after this should be adding highlights. So let's go ahead and get on that. I'm gonna uh, switch up some things around here just a little bit for y'all and we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna show you a little bit on highlights. Another thing I was going to tell you all was um, make sure you keep plenty of paper towels handy. But uh, there's a way to sort of get these paints off of you. And like I personally have devised like a kind of like a scrub. Now you can actually use your essential oils for this. I don't know if I've made this like a spare video someplace or not. But um, 
usually like let's say you paint and you really work with art supplies you can take like your regular like Epsom bath salts like your salts that you buy like at the store mix them with coconut oil or olive oil one or the other doesn't really matter whatever you want really and um, it makes like a wonderful scrub and like I think if you even mix it like with a little bit of like vinegar it actually does help sort of like if you get this on your clothes um, I'm trying to think whether or not cold or hot water works best for this um, I don't know I feel like I want to say cold but then it also depends like well if your paint is fresher on your clothes than hot water but if it's cold if it's dried then maybe a little bit colder I don't know um, I'm, so, I'm sort of meticulous about trying not to get this on my clothes anymore but there, I can't remember off the top of my head whether or not it's preferable to get this off your clothes with cold or hot water. If somebody could tell me that, but, you know, that'd be awesome too. But yeah, I'm going to go on over with like a little bit of a lighter green. Um, another idea for this, like if you can get like, uh, what is it? What's the word I'm hunting here? Um, magazine clipping images. Like let's say you have like this picture of like a flower or a bird or whatever if you can kind of put something in here like when all said and done like if you can get like rubber cement glue you can um, take something like this and actually mod like an image over it um, but all of my rubber cement glue has actually become rubber cement as of late and I've had to throw it out so I can't show you that but um, that is a technique that I did learn like when I did go to college for this as a major a while back. But So basically kind of what I'm doing now is I'm sort of putting my lighter colors over this like in layers. And that's kind of like what we're going to continue to do. I wanted to make my grass and I'm going to try to get... Eh, hold up. I'm going to use this color. Um, I don't know if I want to make this like a willow tree or what. Um, but I was thinking about possibly making it like a flowering tree. What do y'all think? Well, I might stick with green. But we're going to take like the tip of our fan brush here, take this lighter green. And then kind of what you're going to do is you want to make like your brush lay like in the direction you're going to make your tree branches, right? So if your light hits like at the top, you want to put it this way. But since our sun is setting, our light is coming up through the horizon. So we're going to just lay our brush right like that. And you see how the colors run up like that too? That's what we want. And... make it neat a little bit. Okay. Yeah, you just sort of just wanting to make like the effect of like branches. Now we're going to let that dry just a little bit here. And um, another thing we can do, like let's say we want our ground to just be barely highlighted. We're going to gently go over the top right like this. And we're going to sort of make our colors meet right down here like this. And we're going to sort of just make it come up against the base of the tree. And then we're going to make it look like it's dancing. Make it dance. Like that. Now this actually adds a wonderful effect. Um, this is exactly kind of where I want this at. Um, I'm going to add a little bit of darker green up through here. 
and then I'm going to come back over the water and then add the clouds like in my sky and um, then we're going to put in our detail. So this actually is a good one too like if you're doing this while watching like a show or something too. <laughs> But uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put myself like a little canoe, like out this way, out here. And I'm going to put like some lanterns and um, I'm going to make the water come across. I'm going to do like a an idea for this too, like um, what I'm thinking I might do is do like a red or an orange for the water. Like a complementary color, especially like for this stuff. You know makes it all the more like unique makes it vivid so like if you can kind of work in your funky colors you know rock on dude totally all right so again we're waiting on this to dry so you know take a break you know do your chores do your homework you know because again this is just something you're kind of making you know it's, it's supposed to be relaxing it's not gonna you know, again, like, if it doesn't have to be perfect to, ooh, another thing y'all can do is you can take Q-tips or, like, you can actually finger paint. Kind of, like, take it. Watch out. And then it makes it sort of look more like leaves, like if you sort of touch it a little bit. Just a little bit. See? I'm actually going to blend this anyway. Um, yeah. So, I'm going to take like this light color here that I've already got for the top of the tree and I'm going to put this in it. And I'm going to get me like my smaller fan brush if I can find it. See, like the bad thing is also about being an artist is it's when organization is it's all right you know just you do what you can <laughs> it is what it is. I think though it's honestly the way like our brain works too like we're not I think we wouldn't be like as creative too I was also gonna mention um, if you all have like a favorite uh, painting like brand, like what kind of paints, if you also like to paint too, what is your favorite brand of paints was my question. I kind of like that before. I think I'm going to leave it alone actually and just highlight it a little bit more. Yeah. Alright, so, what is it going to get? Let's do a fun color for our tree, shall we? Like, I want to do like something kind of funky for this tree here. So, I'm thinking maybe like a burnt feeling. Nope, actually, I'll be right back, y'all. The color I need is across the room. I'll be right back. Alright, now, for this one, I'm just going to be using like a very skinny brush and I'm thinking like I want maybe like a little bit of a flat brush that's something small so I'm going to kind of go with something little like this and we're going to sort of just gently sort of like kind of just the highlight of the tree right like that, right? Um, I'm going to blend the colors, I'll sort of blend in what you got. I was thinking also about possible putting a face on this tree, <laughs> but one thing at a time, right? Like. That won't be until like the very end if I do do something like that. Right. Let's put in a little bit of tree roots. Get that 
really teeing up my water. I just dropped my brush. I got paint on my painting. That's what happens though when you try to do too many things at once. I've been in a mode where I've been multitasking for days. See, like that, this will erase, like just, yeah, just gently, if you do, if you make a mistake when your paints are still wet, you can just kind of do whatever like that. Um, another thing, like, what I like to do, like, you see, um, this paint tip brush here, look at that. It does wonderful for, like, hold on, let me show y'all. Like, if I wanted to, like, I could sort of highlight it. And then I could take it and it would make like the suggestion of grass and it kind of makes it look like it's not really going to quite show up until it's dry. But, um, there we go. And just take like a little bit of lighter color and just sort of just dot, dot, dot like that. Um, this one, that other, this brush also that I just showed you guys is a great one for doing flowers. Yeah. Just tap, 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 you know. Like good old Bob Ross. You know, he was one of like my teachers you know I definitely recommend checking out Bob he was back on and the back in the day every day when I would come home from school I would watch Bob Ross and I started painting along with him probably when I was nine or ten years old and I'm still doing it so I think especially like if you want to work with oils now I do acrylics but check out Bob definitely he he, he, he's my man, <laughs> Bob Ross. <sighs> you know, he was close to the state where I live, and then, like, I was having health troubles at the time, so I didn't actually get to go meet him. That's when my one regret is I wasn't able to go meet him when he was around. Um, so kind of like where we're at now, um, we're ready to do like the rest of our highlights. So I am going to probably clean my water and I'll be right back with you. I know I keep stopping and starting, but I said in the beginning though too, this is something that you sort of stop and start to do. This is something you sort of do like at a slow pace, you know. Um, so, all right, I'll be right back, y'all. Okay, so, see this brush, see this screen. We're doing like our little, so if you wanna do your highlights, you can also do this with a regular fan brush, but I like using this brush just because it's funky looking. Another thing you might could also possible try is doing this technique with like a kitchen fork. Um, if you do this painting and you try this technique with a kitchen fork, I kind of want to see it. Like, I want to see what you pull off with, like, a kitchen fork with this technique. I think that'd be interesting. Um, yeah, we're just sort of, like, making our highlights in our grass like this. You sort of just want to... Always try, though... To paint things like in person if you can like I used to do a thing where I would go places and like I would paint things like in person it kind of helps you with this sort of thing with about like kind of figuring out where your lighting should go and what have you um, I'm gonna do a little bit darker green at the bottom here the good thing is like about a lot of acrylic paints too is they're like at a consistency that you can apply them right to your canvas. But other ones, like your oils and your 
watercolors, definitely, maybe not so much. I'm going to go back up over this top part again and just sort of blend. Sort of top. It's a bit yeah. So, like, the last thing I'm probably going to do is sort of make this come out and pop more a little bit. Um, so, I think we're ready, like after you wait on this to dry a little bit, because the reason why we also wait like on these paintings like this to dry is so you're not dragging your wrist through it <laughs> and ruining your clothes and your painting. Also, I was going to show you like this, if you take like a brush just with water, now this is a clean brush, like if you want, you can pull your paint up like this, like if you wanted to make like a tall grass effect. And pull it up like this, see? And then you can put like little cattails or whatever. Um, and then all you have to do is do your shades. Um, yeah, and again, like watch, like you can take like a clean wet brush and sort of pull I think I'm going to put something down at the base of this tree. I kind of ruined the paint down at the base of the tree. But I'm just going to put an image there anyway. So, And that's the nice thing like about painting too. It's your painting. If you mess it up just you know do whatever with it. I mean, actually, I swear, sometimes some of the best paintings start out with like a few mistakes. <laughs> and that's truth. I kind of one time like I messed up this painting and then I ended up making like this abstract thing with it. And it actually came out looking pretty good. I'll have to find where it is. It's like an older picture. I did it like a long time. But, alrighty, so, um, yeah, so basically we're kind of like at that phase, like we're going to wait on this screen to dry here, and um, as it dries though, I suggest maybe trying to blend a little bit, because like here, like I have like a, sort of like a separate like in my colors, so I'm going to kind of just... You know, make the shadow part come back down. I'm gonna and I'm just sort of tapping and blending and yeah. Now, usually, like, when you paint most scenery, that's what you kind of want to do. Like, now, if you're adding, like, the effect of water or motion, that's when you want to sort of be dragging your brush. But, all right, so, we're ready pretty much to do our highlights now. So, we're almost done. And you know, if you've watched this far, you know, shout out to you. I love you, send me love back. So, all right, we're going to wait. We're going to make sure everything dries. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to sort of put in my highlights. And we're going to add our last final finishing details. And I'll see you back then. And if not, you know, thanks for watching so far for your patience. I appreciate it. Stay cool. All right. Alright, so now for this next part, if you have black light paints and gel pens and anything like that, go get them now. Go get glow in the dark paint, go get your black light paint because this is going to be something that actually would be a great painting that would be under a black light um, because of the type of highlights we're going to put in. Um, so. I'm going to get like my warm colors now. We've worked with mostly like a cool palette, right? 
So our next step is going to be that we're going to get some warm and red tones because like my idea, I'm going to put like a red tone across the tree and then like we're going to do like a little canoe here that looks like it's just waiting to take off with a nice little pillow in it. Um, but you know, you can put whatever you want in this painting. Like if you want to put like some lovers against the tree, put them there. If you want to put the moon in the sky, you want to put birds, I mean, you know, I, I support you totally. I mean, this is your painting. I'm just teaching you how to sort of put the basic background on, sort of kind of like in a way for a beginner. Like, there's people, you know, that do this professionally and have like this whole technique. But this technique here, I feel, is kind of meant, you know, for those of y'all that only have like a certain amount of time you can put into a painting as well as um, this is kind of like an easier way to do it I've noticed for quite a few people including like myself um, so let me know what y'all think definitely alright so I kinda wanna get like a bright orange I wanna get like a bright orange I'm gonna get like a pink I'm gonna get some whites and um, I'm going to probably spend like 15 to 10 minutes trying to open all these tubes of paint here. So, I'll, again, <laughs> I hate to do it, but I'm going to pause this again. Alrighty, all the tubes of paint are open. Cool. Okay, so I'm going to take my fan brush again that's nice and wet. I'm going to dab it just a little bit on my paper towel. I've put like a strip of color where I want it to go. And now what I'm going to do... It's kind of just take it. So I'm going to blend this back down, is what we're going to do. Kind of so. I was going to put some clouds in here, so I'm also going to do, I think I am going to put the moon in this painting, though, but, uh, let's see, I don't know what, I'm going to, hold a minute, so, this also, um, putting another layer of paint over this is going to actually help solidify the glitter in it, too. Um, so I get my brush wet again because I kind of want the glitter to stay where it is and just make like my colors. And we're going to just sort of gently kind of come in and around the branches as best we can. I know it's a challenge realistically. Should have added the extra layer of paint before I put the tree branches down, but nobody's perfect. So, mm. I'm gonna kind of put my darker purple cascading color against like the trunk of the tree too. Um, and then. I'm going to put like my water like on top of here, but we're going to take a nice short little brush like this. See how this is like a flat top, right? We're going to take like our bright orange and just sort of kind of come around where the tree is. And then we're just going to push it back into the color of the wood like this and kind of get your middle like put your lightest like if you load your brush sort of work from where like your highlights would be and then come down like this and then you kind of want to you can put your lines in 
from the tree too. Um, This is a I'm going to add like one last layer kind of on the outside. This is going to be like a thicker tree. See? Just kind of just put like little lines where wherever you want, you know, just you can see how like I'm kind of moving my brush though. I'm sort of doing this here because this adds like a it's kind of what makes like it look Alright, now you're gonna leave that alone and try not to I'm like it took me years though, I promise you all, to learn to like not run my hands through things like my wrists. Like I um I have certain physical limitations actually in real life, so it's another reason why, you know, art's very important to me. So I'm gonna sort of make my water line here. I just sort of want to run this orange color right up into the purple, you know, and then we're going to put it in there with the hot pink, kind of bring it down like that. Um, another trick and tip is you can get your brush as clean as possible. Just kind of wipe it like that. See? But, me, I think I am, um, I like to, I want to do like little, we're going to do swirly little clouds and things like that. And then we're going to, um, when I'm done, what I'm going to do is we're going to sort of come back over this with some markers to make our bolder shadows and things. Um, so I'm probably going to take like a fan to this or something like, um, Realistically, though, if you wanted to, like, you could stop right here and come back, like, in a day, and you could still do this painting, like, how we're about to do it, but this is a video, so, um, anyway, I'm gonna blend a few more colors into the background, and then I'm gonna pause this, and then I'm gonna come back, and we're gonna basically come back when we do the finishing touches. Um, you know, if you do this painting, I would love to see it. You know, if you actually do this painting with me, I want to see it in the comments. Alright, so. Unfortunately, my equipment, like my, I've tried to do videos like this before to where I have tried to do like this whole thing with time elapsing and it just, it won't upload to YouTube. Like I literally tried to do a video like this before, like a couple months ago, and I tried to do it where like I elapsed like the time. No one do it. I have no idea. But all right, so what I'm doing is I'm gently kind of getting like my tip of my brush wet here. And then I want to take, like at an angle like this, toward the top of your water. I'm just going to sweep. Trying to get as close to the edge of your land as you can. And you're going to sweep like this. This is going to be like the highlight of your water. We're going to come back and we're going to blend this. Oh, shit. Just take like a wet brush 
because you got your darker paint underneath and blend it. That. Um, if that's not working out for you, because these are thin paints, honestly, these are the first time I've actually used these paints. So, I'm learning about this as, as you are. Um, <laughs> Alrighty, so it's not blending like I like. I think, honestly, next time I do a video for you guys, I'll use the paints I like to use that I know how the effects are going to be. Um, so... I suppose what I'll do like when this is done is I will sort of come over it with like a light color There we go, that looks a whole hell of a lot better. Okay. <sighs> I was trying not to curse in this. It's. Uh, what can I say? Like, when I have like a good amount of Irish, Scottish Irish, in one side of my family, so it, it can't be helped. And besides, I think Scottish people come up with like the best insults, I swear. It's funny. <laughs> I also love hearing that accent. So I'm just sort of taking like my darker blue here. Um, yeah, so like if you, I suppose this, you know, if you end up with like thin paints like I have, this is, this may be helpful. <laughs> um, yeah, because usually, like I don't work with as thin of paints. And that's the truth. But, like, I'll show you what we got so far. I know this is upside down, but we're done blending, actually. Um, so, there's our finished product for our background. Um, I'll show you, like, when this is done, what I added. But, like, I do hope that we all learn something here about quality of paints, definitely. And um, I hope, you know, you enjoyed this. So... Let me know what y'all thought. I will probably wait till this dries and I will just show you very briefly what the end of this whole thing looks like. I know this has been a very long video. So thank you so much for tuning in and watching. I greatly appreciate it. Stay real, y'all. All right, so stay tuned for the next two minutes of what this finished painting will look like if you're interested. If not, just you'll see it on Instagram, right? You stayed this far. So you give yourself a pat on the back and an extra prize of something, like a snack, whatever you like, coffee. It's it's your treat, man. All right. Okay, so this has had a little bit of time to dry. So um, now when you paint acrylics, when you do this, um, it's very easy because what I'm doing is like, as you can see, I'm sort of taking just some lighter blue paint and sort of like what I've done is I take my flat tip brush here and I just kind of very carefully just put the lines out like this and then that's how you do that. And then you just sort of can take like a black translucent color and I need a brush before you do it. But, um, yeah, and then you can just blend your colors. I had to redo the tree trunk because I tried to put, like, a picture of a carving in it, and it didn't quite look out. So I think I might put, like, some birds up here or something. But um, I will go ahead and um, I'm going to show you guys a little bit of a trick how to make things pop before I go. Like after your painting totally dries, you want to get your highlight colors. Now this would be a great time to get your glow in the dark, your black light paints to do this and just have a ball, go nuts. Um, so I'm taking like a little bit of gold and yellow here 
and I'm just lightly kind of loading the very top of my fan brush like this and I have to turn this I can do it this way and then kind of what I can do is just make the like this I go like a sideways motion do you see how that makes the tree pop like that do you see and it looks like there's little like shiny leaves coming out of this and another thing you can do especially like when up toward the top of this tree here is I can I decided I was going to try to do it upside down for y'all I read things upside down and backwards all the time so I can paint like it too anyway but yeah I'm using like a little bit of a gold and metallic paint and just gently kind of just dot 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 and it looks like grass when it's done Another nice thing to add to this would be fireflies. Now this is this canoe. Um, probably get like a picture of a canoe. It might help you. Um, but uh, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and stop here and add my last finishing touches with like my uh, gel pens. Like this is pretty much your finished product that you want it to look like um, and I have to finish I'm gonna finish shading the umbrella and the rest of the canoe but um, yeah so thank you so much for watching if you stayed this far you know hats off to you this is my very first time making a video like this so um, let me know if there's anything I can do to kind of condense it or what would help you definitely and if you like this I can definitely like make another one alrighty so thanks for watching and I hope you like this for sure um, take it easy y'all peace and good night